Thank you very much, uh, Tim uh, Timothy, for that kind of uh, introduction. Uh, I would also like to extend my appreciation to the organizers of this event for having me and also for getting uh, the Medicines Patent Pool involved over the years. Uh, this is my first interest conference, but uh, the organization that I work for uh, has been uh, a part of interest, and we are, we are, we are grateful for that. So uh, I will be talking about access, uh, accessing COVID-19 antivirals and new long-acting agents in Africa. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go through uh, the items. Do we advance the slides here? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, so um, I'll go through the agenda items, uh, the outline. Uh, so I'll give a brief talk about Medicines Patent Pool, uh, who we are and how we operate, so that eventually when I get to the, uh, the, the, the drugs or the, uh, the products, we will understand you know, the process and where we're coming from. Uh, so I will talk specifically about uh, COVID-19 antivirals, uh, then discuss long-acting antivirals, briefly. Uh, so I'll touch a little bit on mRNA technology transfer hub uh, and uh, close and close off from there. Sorry. It doesn't seem to be working. Oh, okay. So the Medicines Patent Poll is a public health organization aiming to accelerate access to new, new health technologies in LMICs. And uh, we facilitate innovation uh, through that process. Uh, later on, I'll get to how we do that. Uh, and the way we operate is through voluntary licensing and technology transfer. So the initial work of Medicines Patent Pool was focused on HIV medicines. But eventually, we expanded to essential medicines and uh, uh, for COVID-19, uh, we've been working to, ac uh, to, uh, to uh, accelerate uh, access to new treatments and to support uh, development of vaccine manufacturing as well in uh, low and middle income countries. So uh, there are five key steps that uh, we follow. Uh, the first is to identify medicines needed in LMICs where licensing can improve access. And the second step is to approach patent holders, talking about innovators, and negotiate licenses from a public health perspective. Uh, the third process is to sublicense the, the, the products to uh, generic manufacturers. And, uh, and then we support the generic manufacturers to develop uh, the generic versions of the innovator products. And of course, the last stage is to support uptake at uh, the country uh, uh, level. So uh, in terms of the principle, the underlying principle is competition. Uh, so evidence has shown that generic competition drives lower prices and imp improves access. Uh, so the graph I'm showing uh, on, the, on, on the extreme left of the bar, it's uh, an inno innovative product. So if you have one generic in the market, price comes down by a little bit, maybe by about 15, about 15 percent. But as you have more generic in the, generics in the market, competition leads to lower prices. And if prices go down, then more people can access treatment. And of course, that helps to improve health outcomes. So that is basically the underlying principle. So, uh, so apart from uh, helping to uh, get generics to be introduced, we also talk about speed, how quickly can we get, get generics to, uh, to, to the market? Uh, traditionally, uh, some products take 10, 15, 20 years after introduction in high-income countries before they are available in LMICs. Uh, uh, so in the case of uh, the products that are on the screen, lupinavir, retinavir, we're lucky it's just, it's just about eight years, but some products take much longer than that. So with MPP intervening, for two products, just as an example, Dolutegravil and TLD, it took half of that period, four years, to get the products to market. And in terms of 
time to significant uptake. Uh, they, it took over 12 years for lupinavir, retinavir, uh, sorry, for TDF to actually act, uh, you know, uh, reach a critical level in terms of uptake. Whereas for the other two products, uh, specifically for uh, Daclatasvir, it took just five years. So we don't just help products, generic products to get to market, but we, we do it in order to get to market quickly so that we can save lives. Uh, so I, I'm sure that many people in this room are familiar with the work that was done on, on Dolutegravil until the combination. Uh, the, the product was, uh, uh, was approved by US FDA in August 2013, and Viv Healthcare signed a licensing agreement with uh, MPP, and from there, things just took a new turn in terms of uh, acceleration of access. And today, well, as at the end of 2021, 560, 556 million packs of TLD and 28, about 29 million packs of uh, Dolutegravil have been sold. And that actually means saving lives. Uh, so the, the chart there just shows the dramatic increase because of the fact that uh, there's an intervention to make the generic versions of the innovator products available. So now, on COVID-19, what, uh, what is going on? Uh, I'm sure that many of us are aware uh, that uh, as far as therapeutics are concerned, we have limited products in the market. Uh, uh, so, but I'll be talking specifically on two uh, products. Uh, and our journey through getting to the stage of these two products, you know, being uh, close to, to, to getting to market, uh, it, it's a long journey. Uh, from uh, shortly after uh, uh, COVID-19 was declared uh, a public health emergency, we got the mandate to expand our work to COVID-19. Then MPP launched Vaxpa. Vaxpa is a, web, a website where all patent information and licensing, uh, and licensing information data are actually housed because we need to gather all the data to know where patents, patents, uh, patents, are, uh, patents are filed or where they're not filed so that we can know how to go, go about our work and also other people also access the database. Then we signed a licensing agreement with MSD, the innovator of Monop Monopiravir. Then MPP signed another license with Pfizer. So US FDA in December 2021 approved uh, Monopiravir and Namatravir, I mean separately, but it, it happened uh, about the same month. So that gave us the signal to go ahead to sign uh, uh, a sub-licensing to generic companies. So, as we, uh, so today we have 27 generic companies that we have signed licenses with to produce Monopiravir. And we have 35 generic companies that MPP has signed licenses with to produce Namatravel. So it is expected that by next month, uh, uh, WHO will pre-qualify the first generic all of Monopiravil. It's just an estimated timeline. Uh, for Namatravil, it's a bit uh, longer. We're expecting that that might be maybe around the first quarter of next year. Uh, but some of the generic manufacturers are really, really working hard to make it to come uh, much uh, earlier. So in terms of where the license covers, so the Monopiravir license covers 105 LMICs, and that includes the whole of Africa. Uh, for Monopiravir, the manufacturers are in 11 countries, but they can supply all licensed covered LMICs. So uh, what that means is that a manufacturer in India can supply any of those countries that I showed in the previous slide. If another manufacturer in South Africa can also supply any of those other countries. So uh, if, if an LMIC is not showing on this, uh, on this map, it's, it, that doesn't mean that that LMIC will not be able to access uh, the product because the manufacturers supply everywhere that are, that are covered. So this is how the map for Namatravel looks like. So the, 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 uh, the, the companies that have been licensed, we supplied 95 LMICs. 
And these countries actually account for about uh, for over 50% of the world population. So, uh, so for Namat Reveal, uh, the, 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 the manufacturers are located in 12 countries, but they can supply all LMICs. We've had a couple, I mean, we've had many people actually ask us why there is no company in Africa. Um, so, I mean, two, three, well, a number of uh, com companies were actually offered the licenses, but uh, they didn't take it. However, that wouldn't mean, as I said earlier, that the products will not be available in Africa because all the other companies producing the generic versions of this product will be able to supply all countries that the licenses cover. Uh, so, uh, so in terms of the, uh, the recommendations, clinical or therapeutic recommendations, I would advise that uh, yeah, we visit the WHO website uh, on, uh, because we know that the recommendations keep changing. Uh, for monopiravir, uh, the, the, it's been shown that it reduces the risk of death and hospitalization in patients that are high risk by about 30 percent. For adenomatravir, it, re it reduces risk of death, of hospitalization and death in those that are unvaccinated by about 89 percent. Uh, uh, but in terms of, you know, the precise recommendations, uh, the WHO has clarity uh, around that, and I would advise that we visit those sites. So uh, regarding long-acting uh, antivirals, uh, FDA approved carbotegravil injectable for pre-exposure prophylaxis in December 2021. Uh, remember that the way we work is to, uh, uh, to, to assess what products are there that are covered by patent, that if the generic version of it is available, it can make a difference. So this is a product that we believe has high potential, and uh, it's, demo it's, it's actually demonstrated superiority over the oral PrEP in clinical trials. Uh, it's bi-monthly injections. Uh, it could represent a new option for prevention of transmission of HIV uh, user values and preferences studies suggest that injectable long-acting PrEP could be preferred by several groups and key populations. And there's, so for us, we feel that availability and affordability is key, and that's why we have started to discuss with Viv. Uh, so on, on uh, Viv's website, so you'll see this publication, and the details are there in terms of discussions that are ongoing to ensure that this product is, uh, uh, is made available as soon as, uh, as possible. In the generic versions that, is, that will be accessible to people in LMICs. Uh, MPP's pipeline of long-acting agents also include an investigational product of the University of Washington. Um, so that is still work in progress. Uh, we are not able to talk specifically about that at this moment. We are also exploring several other agents in the HIV product development continuum, many of which are potentially long-acting, targeting different, different uh, points, different sites. Uh, so it's, all these are still uh, in development, but it seems that Lena Capavre seems to be the, the, the most promising of them, and we are really very enthusiastic that that's going to come out uh, uh, positive. So just briefly, about mRNA technology transfer hub, because this has been an area that uh, MPP has been uh, focused on uh, also uh, in recent times. Uh, so the, the, the program is a global initiative that aims to improve mRNA vaccine manufacturing capabilities in LMICs. It was established in July 2021 in response to the inequities that we all know about where 50% of high-income countries were already vaccinated and less than 1% of uh, low-income countries had, uh, hadn't uh, gotten access. So uh, it is driven by the World Health Organization-led uh, consortium that includes MPP. 15 LMICs, including six in Africa, uh, have been announced uh, to receive training and, and technology from the hub. Uh, so the focus is going to be on mRNA initially, 
but uh, it is designed to encourage research and development uh, into other products, uh, into other disease areas, for example, HIV. And so the consortium, the hub, that is based in South Africa, uh, is composed of uh, uh, six organizations, WHO, the Medicines Patent Pool, Afrigen. Afrigen is, uh, is, is a company that, uh, that, does, that is involved in the development of uh, the product. Uh, then Baovac. Baovac received technology and produced the vaccines. Africa CDC and the South Africa MRC. So, uh, and the, the concept is that uh, you have a centralized hub to facilitate multilateral technology transfer uh, to regionally distributed recipients. So you could have, in the hub, you have inventors, you have researchers, you have technology donors that develop product. And the technology that results from that is transferred to recipients. As I mentioned earlier, 15 of those recipients have been, uh, 15 countries have actually been uh, announced as uh, the recipients. And the idea is that uh, the recipient uh, will pursue sustainable business models between uh, pandemics. It's not just only about COVID. The idea is that they develop the capacity and the, uh, 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 and, and the skills and the business, uh, so, uh, sustainable business models that can make uh, those uh, uh, manufacturing firms or companies to be able to exist, I mean, to, 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 uh, to, to, uh, to operate between one pandemic and the other, and another. Uh, so these are, this is a geographical representation of the, uh, the location of the spokes. Uh, so the hub is in South Africa, but the hub is linked to spokes in LMICs, 15 distributed across LMICs. Uh, so uh, we have online tools that is a, comp uh, a, a compilation of data on patency and licensing. So please feel free to visit and uh, get information as you want about uh, products, uh, license status, or products uh, uh, volumes that are, you know, that, that, that are being consumed in your region, your location. All this information is available on this website that, uh, uh, that is shown. And uh, yes, so this is the access to medicines tracker. So this provides information on progress and uptake of MPP licensed generic products. If, for example, you want to know how well the Tegravil is being taken up in your region or in your country, it, it can be accessed from this, uh, uh, this site. Uh, so uh, in closing, uh, we, MPP has done uh, 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 work in different areas, and just a few of the kind of results that we have shown. Uh, MPP license have delivered uh, over 18 billion uh, doses of medicines to LMICs, uh, and the medicines, uh, uh, the medicines that, L uh, that MPP has helped to, do, to develop has reached nearly 150 countries, and providing more than 38 million patient years of treatment. And in terms of uh, money saved, nearly a billion dollars in savings to the global public health community through the purchase of low cost quality assured medicines. And these monies can be channeled to other areas of, uh, of need. So it's, 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 uh, the, the idea is not just to save life, uh, well, it's to save life, but you also save money to save more lives by channeling money to other areas of, uh, of, of, of the health system. Uh, so just to close, I think it is important that uh, uh, health systems or stakeholders at the regional and at the country level uh, prepare ahead of the entry of generics. Uh, because leaving the products, the generic products to the market might not guarantee access to people uh, in the remote areas, in villages, or in, in small towns, at the country level. So, uh, because yes, we, we believe the market mechanism can help to drive down price, but there are, there are still some people that may not be able to afford, no matter how low. So it is important for each health system to start looking at the regulatory uh, aspects, uh, to start looking at procurement, 
to start looking at testing because some of these products actually need, specifically the products, the two products, both monopiravil and namatravil require testing. So there is need to improve testing capacity. And uh, yeah, I think I will, start, uh, I will stop here. I thank you so much for your attention.